All right, so this uh, document is from books that I've read and, and uh, taken quotes from. So none of these words on this document are mine, uh, aside from this uh, paraphrasing. And uh, that should be it for the rest of the document. A few typos, I apologize for them. <coughs> so this is um, a book by Yuval Noah Harari. And in that book he states that humans became behaviorally modern sometime around. All right. Humans had, I guess you could say, become. They finished the process of becoming. Uh, behaviorally modern around 70,000 years ago so uh, basically they they found that it goes back further than that but that is a conservative uh, figure all right so for sure by around 70,000 years ago uh, humans were behaviorally cognitively anatomically modern okay cognitively being uh, you know mental capacity mental capabilities intellectual capabilities so Homo sapiens reached Australia around 45,000 years ago. All right, those are the same people, all right, who had found um, ways to make uh, maritime travel a possibility. All right, traveling on water. All right, these are all things that, you know, they don't want us to learn in school. These are all things that are skipped over. They don't want, you know, little black kids to learn the big picture and they want us to learn the Bible. All right, here still in 2024. Unfortunately, we've got and we've got black sellouts running the schools. Christian blacks, all right, sellouts who are their lap dogs, all right, who agree that we don't need to learn big history. All right, they themselves are probably ashamed to even think about stuff this old because they assume people were monkeys back then, all right, because they actually don't understand reality. All right, we've got we've got ignorant people who never had the motivation to put the work in and do the research, all right, but who are motivated now to stand in the way. All right, and try to keep these kids from learning the truth, both black and white. All right, they think they're doing the right thing. <laughs> they think they got it figured out because you know they black. Uh, they you know they're in love with a black person or a white person. You know they they got black or white friends, whatever the case is, and they think that that's the solution. Just all hold hands. If we all just hold hands and hold our breath, you know all these problems will go away. Those type of people are running our schools. All right, running this running this country probably. So about 70,000 years ago, organisms belonging to the species Homo sapiens started to form even more elaborate structures called cultures. The subsequent development of these human cultures is called history. And it's really called prehistory, all right, by uh, most people because they state, they state that history didn't start until uh, Mesopotamians started writing things down about a thousand years after plagues spread from Ukraine okay what a coincidence right so this period from about 70,000 years ago to 30,000 years ago witnessed the invention of boats oil lamps bows and arrows and needles the appearance of new ways of thinking and communicating between 70,000 and 30,000 years ago constitutes the cognitive revolution so they would love to teach our kids about the European Renaissance, and, you know this and that and the Enlightenment and all this and that all right, and they want to teach us that racism didn't exist until they came over to the new world. All right, and there's no concept, no notion, couldn't be possible for there to be racism. All right, before 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. They would love for us to believe, to continue believing that. They'd love for us to have no facts and believe Jesus Christ died for our sins and all the other BS. They would love that. And you can choose if you want to continue to do what they, what they want you to do. So the first objects of art date from this era, as does the first clear evidence for religion, commerce, and social stratification. All right, so that would have been, you know, not based on race. All right, any type of social stratification, I'm sure that you can imagine that would not have been based on race. So maybe whether or not you made art or whether or not you understood uh, some idea about a higher power that could have determined okay social stratification um, we don't know well I'm sure we'll find out I'm sure I'm sure we will scientists uh, these great scientists we have today I'm sure they'll figure it out so the most commonly believed theory argues that accidental genetic mutations 
all right because these mutations don't happen on purpose it's not God trying to you know trying to create something their accidental genetic mutations change the inner wiring of the brains of sapiens enabling them to think in unprecedented ways and to communicate using an altogether new type of language all right so biology that's something we need to understand they want us to understand the Bible and memorize their delusions and we really need to understand biology all right if they want to ignore it let them ignore it all right but when they're giving your kids hugs every day at school and feeding your kids food every day at school all right they start to get power over your kids and now when they lie to your kids and tell them these lies like uh, Africans sold themselves into slavery or what have you the kids believe it all right because these are the same people that give them hugs every morning when they when they walk into class and and give them candy throughout the day and and you know supposedly are, are saving their lives all right white savior so African archaeology this book is from um, Cambridge University Press um, published by I forget the name of the author but if you type in African archaeology Cambridge University Press on Google I'm sure I am very um, I am very confident that it will show up as one of the results and so I'm gonna scroll down if you want to pause it and read you can um, so I'm gonna read the ones that I think are the most important so and there's a lot of important stuff honestly it's all worth reading uh, on your own time but I can't have my video be too long so moving on here uh, says we have human fossils and other archaeological materials from widely distributed African regions demonstrate both the gradual evolution of anatomically modern humans and the equally gradual inception of cultural practices that are accepted as representing significant advances over those of earlier times. So in Africa, these processes are now seen as having begun as long ago as 250,000 years and to have continued into the period some 50 to 35,000 years ago. So when their end results made uh, a relatively sudden appearance <laughs> in Europe, all right, they had already been spreading for about 200 thousand years all right these are again this is what they don't want us to learn they don't want us to understand this stuff if I was in a classroom full of black children right now all right there would be some white person outside my class just shaking all right rapidly all right trying to get inside my class and stop me from teaching it all right I've been through it plenty of times already all right I know from experience but moving on so uh, this right here is going to talk about the different technologies that were created so we have computers and you know cell phones and things today that are uh, you know rely on that are made out of resources mined all right by Caucasians all right Caucasian and Eurasian people in Africa all right they go to Africa and they mine Africa for these metals and these resources that they then turn around and turn into this quote-unquote high technology all right that they'd love to take credit for all right and this is all just a that is uh, in other words that is this is the tip of the iceberg okay the roots of all this technology that we have goes back to indigenous black and brown people all right who took the time number one who had the idea to create out of a stone out of stones all right um, these all right microliths all right some of the first technologies uh, that humans use to make their lives more uh, productive efficient uh, etc so moving on um, there are different modes of technology I'm not gonna act like I understand it hundred percent but basically the higher the number the more developed okay and they have different modes there's developments from mode three I believe all the way up to mode five or six and I think it gets higher than that as well they probably have even a classification for today's uh, modes all right so I'm gonna pause here just so you can I'm going to try not to skip through this so that it's possible for people to read it on their own. Okay. And then we've got that. Alright, so with the passage of time, human culture became more complex and its archaeological remains are consequently more varied as well as more abundant. Furthermore, as people develop lifestyles closer in many ways to our own, the surviving traces of their activities are easier for us to interpret. The thought processes and beliefs that lie behind these activities may, for these more recent periods, occasionally be illustrated in the archaeological record through the investigation of such cultural manifestations as graves, settlement layout, or rock art. 
all right and this is uh, hundreds I'm sorry this is tens of thousands of years ago as well as hundreds of thousands of years ago all right here we have it right here both mitochondria of nuclear DNA and modern human populations worldwide seem to indicate that all of them but all uh, modern human populations descend from a single ancestor or small ancestral population that may have lived in Africa about 500 to 100,000 years ago all right that's how far back it goes 500 to 100,000 years ago they want us to think that you know the world was <clears throat> created what 6,223 years ago 420 years before the uh, before Jesus Mm -hmm. Why would that be? What happened to spread around 6,000 years ago? Okay. Alright, and this might be new to some of y'all, but that's the Indo-European language family. Alright. And scientists are, are, are saying that they believe that the Black Sea flooded or infilled around 5... Oh, I'm sorry. 5,000 BCE, uh, which would be 7,000 years ago. Okay, that would have been about, we'll say, a hundred thousand. I'm sorry, that would have been about a thousand years before uh, the plague spread from Ukraine. All right, as depicted right here. So, five hundred, five thousand seven hundred years ago. All right, we had the emergence and spread of Yersinia pestis from Ukraine. All right, causing the spread of the first uh, terrorist rapists, refugees. Okay, in in known history. All right. And they consequently spread around the world, subsequently spread around the world, spreading plague and killing indigenous people. Okay? They went to India, Europe, and into Africa. And when they got kicked out of Africa, alright, they began calling themselves Israel, the Hebrews. Alright, and here we have black people today claiming that they're the real Hebrews, not knowing that they're, they're claiming to be Caucasian invaders plague spreading invaders all right that's, that's called a Hebrew headlock hopefully that's something that we'll come to understand uh, in popular culture that'll become popular uh, parlance so here's the Natufians this is the real indigenous people all right of that land Israel and the Middle East all right these are the indigenous people that were making things happen all right 12,000 to 10,000 years ago all right, before white skin, these are the people that were spreading agriculture. All right, the black people who spread agriculture. All right, from in this area. Now, obviously, it's not showing Africa. There's, it's, it's interesting that Africa's. They go to great lengths to make sure not to, uh, not to talk about Africa. But that's fine. We'll, we'll cover Africa uh, in this video for sure. Got a lot of quotes. And here you go. All right, the world was Africa more or less it was black and brown but they don't want us to think of they don't want us to be aware okay of a thriving earth a thriving black and brown indigenous earth they don't want us to be they don't want that to be a part of our memory all right they don't want that to be a part of our um concept all right, our self-concept or our concept of reality so moving on all right again you've got this book of lies all right this set of lies this ideology of what i would argue is caucasian supremacist reasoning all right first put in practice uh we'll say by moses all right here trying to figure out how in the world white people got to egypt india all over the world spread all over the place and where they came from and so he put together his first uh you know corpus of lies the five books of lies all right to try to explain that all right, and this is what they came up with. Moving on. So, uh, I'm going to try to just pause only so that, there you go. So, Mode 5 Industries, West Africa, 30,000, 10,000 years ago. Again, y'all can read, pause and read this stuff on your own. Um between about 12,000 and 8,000 years ago several sites widely dispersed across southern Africa show occupation by makers of poorly understood industries with many large edge retouched flakes but virtually no microliths or back pieces so basically all right I'm reading this just to show you or to, to 
highlight the fact that just because they didn't have micro lists or back pieces doesn't mean that they weren't cognitively modern all right people didn't have to you know uh rely on uh stone tools some some people could you know use wood there may have been various plants or you know uh trees around that they could use parts of the tree or, or what have you so they are grouped together as the Oakhurst complex you can look that up if you want I, I suggest it type it into Google just see what pops up uh there you go mode five let me see all right later microlithic industries were characterized by geometrical backed forms chiefly crescents which replaced the single pointed types of Nachi Kufen one and its counterparts all right and that Nachi Kufen is probably uh, just an archaeological complex all right which would be associated with a certain culture a group of cultures um, in Africa at this time all right because we're all looking back obviously we're looking back trying to classify what happened in the past it's possible that these stories could have been passed down you know had people not been uh, at the end of swords and you know having to deal with Caucasian spreading delusion or religion uh, ideas all right into Africa and and then and what resulted from that all the all the lies about Solomon and Shiva and what have you but uh, moving on so most African I'm sorry most southern African rock paintings are naturalistic representations of people and animals other natural or artificial uh, objects other than personal accoutrements are rarely depicted the wide variety of animal species shown both identifiable and mythical and the range of human activities equipment and clothing has attracted considerable attention the eland is the animal most frequently represented in the paintings but not in the faunal remains all right so basically they didn't find dead carcasses of the eland all right this species is known to have occupied an important place in the belief systems and symbolism of recent sand communities so i'm not i don't think they're saying that they didn't eat this animal kill and eat this animal but it's probably likely that they would have used its carcass all right so whatever they didn't eat they would have used the bones and all that stuff um to make tools and to make to make items of, of value all right not just discard them and you know throw them in a in a, in a, in a pile somewhere all right so <clears throat> Paintings of human figures in Western Cape and KwaZulu-Natal provinces of South Africa often show lines descending from the nostrils. Trance among the sand is frequently accompanied by nose bleeding. All right, so basically uh, that is showing that there would have been an idea of, um, I'm not going to say mental health, but alternate states of consciousness, I'll say okay which could have inspired religious thinking which could have inspired you know an idea or concepts of oneness in the community or oneness with nature or what have you all right ideas of a central of, a, of even a creator okay way back then all right these ideas are not new they are not um they are not you know they are not something that we should look at as you know uh high intellectual uh you know um value all right these are old ideas not to say that we can't respect them all right but it's nothing new all right and the fact that we are still believing delusions to this day all right is not that impressive it's actually kind of sad all right because god isn't going to tell us anything about this history here for some reason for some reason god could have spoke all of this into everybody's brain but he didn't do it well, let's move on eastern africa all right if you want to read through that obsidian all right y'all yep we all went and watched black panther and talk about vibranium meanwhile they're robbing africa of its resources to this day all right and obsidian all right 70 uh 50 20 000 years ago all right people were turning obsidian into uh 
technology. We know nothing about it. We memorize fake TV shows and all and, and, and rap lyrics. The only sequence which illustrates the early development of Mode 5 Industries in West Africa is at a rock shelter in Shumlaka in the grass fields of northwestern Cameroon. And they're still doing more, so they're going to find more stuff as they continue to, uh, to do research. Alright, but this is, this is information that, had I known and been exposed to this as a middle schooler, had I been watching videos like this in school, about stuff like this in school as a middle schooler, I imagine that I wouldn't have had the same, and many of my classmates wouldn't have had the same issues paying attention, alright, and we would have probably uh, had better, uh, better grades, would have been more interested, alright, as opposed to just doing arts and crafts, alright, talking about you know cowboys and, and Indians and how the Native Americans lost their land very quickly briefly all right and then never looking back and never challenging never challenging the idea the ideas but let me not get uh, off on a tangent let me see pause this here if you want to all right Libya Okay, if y'all want to read that, you can read that. Seafood, yep. That's right. Again, these are not my words. These are all from um, books that I've read. Now, Valley. 18,000 years ago. Alright. This is vegetable food. So you got agriculture. Domestication of plants and animals all stuff they don't want us to know about all right they don't want us to know that this is black and brown people this is before white skin came into existence this is the this is the last picture they want us to have in our head all right they want us to have you know fake movie pictures in our head all that other crazy stuff and then when it comes to real history they'd love for us to just leave it up to mystery what do you know Oh, we, we don't know that. All we know is that, you know, we're here now, right? <laughs> We've got this stolen land of opportunity, right? Let's make the most of it, right? Yeah. Happy captives. 20,000, 11,000 years ago. All right, you can read through that if you want to. Wild barley, 12,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. Shortly after 12,000 years ago, there was a remarkably rapid return to better water conditions in most of what is now the Sahara. Increased runoff from the highlands, coupled presumably with higher rainfall and decreased evaporation, resulted in the return of a regular flow of water to the long dry wadis, which means rivers. The great enlargement of existing swamps and lakes, notably Chad, and the formation of many new ones. Mm -hmm. By 9,000 years ago, changes had taken place, although their form very significant, uh, significantly, as did local uh, environmental conditions. Barbary sheep. Mm -hmm. This is indigenous people. All right, indigenous earth thriving. All right, well watered situations, fishing, and the exploitation of other aquatic food resources played a large part in the economy of a vast area of the central and southern Sahara from Nile Valley, at least as far as west as Mali. Mm -hmm. It's all history they don't want us to know about. All right, when they talk about Egypt, they just want us to think about uh, how the Hebrews were slaves in Egypt, all oh, those evil Egyptians. And when we think about Africa in general, they want us to think Africa is just, you know, uh, full of full of full of uh, primates and, and, and people who are very primitive. That's how they want us to think about Africa. And it wasn't civilized until Europeans got there and started spreading religion and civilization. All right. And if we had if we read, all we had to do is read. We can see that that's not true. But we rather believe Jesus died for our sins so we can go get that money. 
Go chase that bag. Don't worry about the past. <clears throat> the Bible's all black people, so let's go get that money. Ain't got nothing to worry about. We're the real Jews. We're the real Hebrews. Mm -hmm. They want all of our leaders, our principals. They want our teachers. They want the... Uh, the ball players, they want them all to be Hebrews, headlocked, all right, believing in Jesus and Christianity and all that stuff. They want them to be that that agreeable type. That agreeable type can preach a sermon, ready to preach a sermon at any time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Talking about God is good all the time. Okay. If only you would read some of the time, and think some of the time. Here's a, here's a book, Ancient India by Berger Avari. Uh, this is just a quote from it, basically showing that uh, humans had made it to Sri Lanka, the southernmost portion of India, by 26,000 BCE. Uh, humans had also made it to the Americas about this time. Modern humans, black and brown humans, all right? Indigenous Earth here. Here's Ancient Iraq, a little bit about Ancient Iraq, if you want to read about it. Uh, basically, this talks about how Iran... Syria, Palestine, yes, the same Palestine that's getting bombed to pieces today by these Caucasians, all right, who spread from Ukraine around 5,000 years ago. They're bombing stuff to pieces, ruining the world, continuing to ruin the world. Um, and back in the day, all right, indigenous Iranians, okay, indigenous Caucasians, so before white skin, all right, even though Caucasians are indigenous to uh, this area, this region, this is where Caucasians are from and white skin uh, was incubated all right indigenous people had connections between Iran Syria Palestine Anatolian Plateau to the west Armenia okay in the Caucasus but they never reached Iraq nor for that matter any other part of Western Asia the Seleucian Magdalenian cultures all right in this period all right so basically what they're saying is it was they were connected and they were trading all right between those places all right but the cultures all right never reached iraq so the succeeding cultures never reached iraq those which came after the org nation so here we have 18,000 bce a little outline to 2000 BCE of what's going to be covered. All right. <clears throat> so Africa is going to be broken up into regions again. Again, back to microlithic industry 16,000 years ago, 12,000 years ago, Nigeria. And it existed before that as well, but they're just, these are, uh, they have to be particular about what they're, what specific cultures they're talking about, what time periods they're talking about. All right. Complexity of variation. Hard to classify. Obsidian was plentiful. Rift Valley. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Marine food resources. Yep. From about 9,000 years ago to 4,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Antelope horns, warthog tusks, buried with the deceased. So you can imagine those were uh, some sort of significance, believed to be some, uh, some sort of significance in the afterlife. Beads and pendants of bone and shell were widespread. Rock paintings suggest that beads were sometimes sewn onto clothing or worn in the hair, as well as being threaded into strings. Ochre and other coloring matter were probably used for cosmetic and other purposes, as well as for mural decoration. All right, so this is long before white people, long before plague spread. All right, uh, this is actually about. This is about the same time Jesus lived, 2,000 years ago in Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. Only rarely has vegetable matter survived, leading to an imbalanced 
unbalanced representation of the toolkits and diet of the people. The dry cave deposits of southernmost Africa are therefore particularly significant. From these sites, they can see that wood was used for bows, air, bows, arrows, digging sticks, pegs, and wedges. Bark was used for trays, bags, and clothing were made of sewn leather. Leaves were used as wrapping material for valuables, while grass and soft undergrowth were collected for bedding. Vegetable foods were varied and often assumed considerable and often assumed considerable importance in the total diet as they do among modern tropical hunter-gatherer groups. All right, vegetables. I remember somewhere in the Bible, God wanted a, uh, God wanted a, uh, a offering, a sacrifice, and he wanted the savory meat. He didn't want the vegetables. He didn't want the plant, even though you can pick a fruit from a plant without killing it. But if you want to cut the leg off of a, uh, or cut the tongue out of a, of a cow, it, it's, it, it's uh, probably not going to grow back. But what do I know? I've never tried it. Gotta go somewhere right before I can speak. I gotta go to Iraq before I can speak on Iraq, right? Gotta time travel before I can talk about history, right? That's Christian logic. That's that headlock Hebrew logic. Mm -hmm. Happy captive logic. So here we go. Uh, so Mesolithic, Epipaleolithic. All right, Iraq. Very rich history in Iraq. If you want to pause it, uh, and you can read through it on your own. Feel free. I can't spend too much time reading. It's going to make the video too long. And I got to try to get through this in at least an hour. Somewhere around an hour. All right, here you go. I tell Murray Bet continuous occupation from before 8,000 to 7,000 BCE. All right, this is before white people, not too theme. Y'all see that, right? Okay, there you go. Oh yeah, definitely read this, just in case I got somebody who's hungry out here. There the goats and sheep of Kurdistan did not figure on the menu, and all meat and hides came from the wild and fast animals of the neighboring steppe. Alright, wild asses, gazelles, oryx, fallow deer, wild boars, hares were shot down by arrow. The wild plants consumed were einkorn and two-row barley, lentils, vetches, and pistachios. Uh-huh, look how long ago. They want us to think white people. They would love for us to just assume and come to the conclusion that white people domesticated plants and animals. White people all right, are the reason why we have civilization. And that's just blatantly not the case. If, you would just, if we would just read and make a timeline, all right, instead of believing that because Jesus died for our sins, all we got to worry about is ball chasing, bag chasing, okay, and trying to uh, trying to leave a legacy, trying to pass down a legacy. You can read this stuff on your own. So chipstone techniques, again, that is technology. All right. Let you read that on your own. So I've had middle schoolers who decided to write this stuff down, all right, on their own. I didn't force them to. Uh, I did offer it as extra credit, but they were motivated to write it down because I can't say 100% because I wasn't inside their mind, but it seemed to me they were motivated to actually understand things, to actually have an understanding of reality. Middle schoolers, middle schoolers, middle schoolers. Got grown people that would that would that would hate. The last thing they're gonna do is is take notes. And draw a timeline. That's the last thing they're gonna do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've also watched uh, white co-workers of mine, all right, start shaking, all right, and their face gets all red when they see that black students are are learning this, all right, and getting this perspective. They almost have aneurysms, all right. I must have nervous breakdowns. I want to break into the classroom and stop it all. They wish they could. They wish they could erase the knowledge out of those kids' minds, but it's too late now, huh? <laughs> it's too late now. They can't go back. They can't wipe the. Uh, can't wipe the hard drive. Yep. 
revolution will not be monetized. That's all right, though. We get them reparations and land back. That's all we need. And knowledge. Real knowledge. Otherwise, we're going to get the land and reparations right back to God. Give it right back to the conquerors. So you can read this stuff on your own. Here you go. Somewhat of a timeline there. The different periods. All right. So you've got Ubayid and Uruk. All right. Ubayid. This is before white skin spread. Uruk. This is around the time white skin started spreading. What do you know? 5,700 years ago. It's just a coincidence. Or maybe I'm making this stuff up. Maybe I maybe I told uh, told these people to write this book and, and I'm making all this stuff up. I went and planted all the artifacts in the ground and everything. It's just like I make up a, a lie. And be arrogant. Maybe that's maybe that's what's going on. <laughs> Alright, I'll move on. Uh so there's Samara culture. Alright, this is just a description of what they found. Eridu, that's the oldest, I believe, the oldest city in uh in the Fertile Crescent. Alright, it's the most it's the uh most ancient city in the Fertile Crescent, Eridu. It might be underwater today, but it used to be uh close to the coast of the Persian Gulf. Ubayid, okay, this is eight thousand to six thousand years ago. That's around the same time frame that they give for white skin coming into existence. This culture was characterized by large, unwalled, unwalled, that's very important, village settlements with multi-roomed rectangular mud brick house, houses and the appearance of the first temples of public architecture in Mesopotamia. What do you know? With a growth of a two-tier settlement hierarchy of centralized large sites of 10 hectares surrounded by smaller village sites of less than one hectare. All right. Again, this is when they say white skin, the mutation A111T, alanine for threonine, uh, threonine at the 111th position on some chromosome, <clears throat> amino acid substitution. Okay. Uh, the bulk of the population were agricultural laborers, farmers, and seasonal pastoralists. This period was a time of increasingly polarized social stratification huh, and decreasing egalitarianism. So what do you know around the same time, all right, that we have white skin mutation appearing, all right, in this big grand scheme of things, all right, 200,000 years of human history, what are the coincidences, what are the odds, all right, that it's a coincidence, okay, that we have increasingly polarized social stratification and decreasing egalitarianism. Uh huh. Downward social mobility. You mix with the wrong people, you you're, you're, you you move down. Possibly a rise of class hereditary chieftains, perhaps heads of kin groups linked in some way to the administration of temples, shrines, and their granaries, which is grain storages, responsible for mediating intergroup conflict and maintaining social order. Primitive democracy was discarded. So they say Ubayid culture originated from the south. All right, so Ubayid used to be egalitarian, originated from the south. And then as you'll see, just like Abraham, it moved up toward the Caucasus for whatever reason. So there existed a tripartite social division, intensive subsistent peasant farmers with crops and animals coming from the north. Uh huh. Tent dwelling nomadic pastoralists who were dependent upon herds, and hunter gatherer folk of the Arabian, uh, Arabian littoral living in reed huts. All right, so this is transition from Ubayid, all right, to Uruk. So Halaf might be an intermediate uh, culture in some areas. So the earliest evidence of sailing has been found in Kuwait around 45,000 to 4,000 BCE. What do you know? 6,500 years ago, you have the earliest evidence of sailing. All right, this is not white people. This is indigenous black and brown. Unless you want to believe that some white person popped out of the womb, some white baby popped out of the womb, um, and in his lifetime, all of this stuff was created. <laughs> he created all this stuff and was the first person to sail on a boat. Although they would like for us to believe that. They would love for our, they would love to leave it up to our imagination uh, and have it possible for us to believe that. 
who by an expansion used peaceful spread of ideology leading to the formation of numerous new indigenous identities that appropriated and transformed super, uh, superficial elements of Ubaid material culture into locally distinct expressions. All right, so what they're showing here is, although they did have uh, different, you know, jobs of people and, and what you could call classes, what they call classes, all right, for the most part, all right, things were egalitarian. Although there was decreasing egalitarianism moving into the uh, subsequent cultures, the subsequent developments, all right? Mind you, white skin is, uh, the mutation, all right, is around this time. So Halaf culture, this culture was characterized by a more robust movement toward urbanization. Okay. They practiced animal husbandry in sedentary communities. There were also tribes that practiced domestication of animals as far north as Turkey and as far south as the Zagros Mountains. The south had intensive irrigated hydraulic agriculture. The south. Okay. You can imagine that the water, <clears throat> the water was uh, moving around, the coast was moving around. All right. Or if it was possibly, you know, receding, uh, they would have been interested in trying to uh, develop ways to irrigate the land all right for agriculture again this is black and brown all right this is where white skin is going to end up being introduced all right one of the first places uh, on earth all right where white skin was going to make its uh, initial appearance in history all right so pottery was distributed from the region of Aleppo to the Diala Valley and was imparted I'm sorry imported to eastern Anatolia Sicilia and northern Syria Harim Basin and parts of Western Iran and Transcaucasia. For the first time in proto history, one single culture extended from the Jazeera to the Tigris Euphrates Delta. All right, so now you can imagine that this would have been a good place, a good safe haven for people who would have been running from plague. All right, the plague that's spreading from Ukraine around this time, starting in Ukraine around this time. So, lack of rupture between the Halaf and Ubaid cultures excludes a conquest of northern and central Iraq by Ubaidians coming from the south. And the most plausible hypotheses are a peaceful infiltration or the adoption by the Halafians of the culture of another population after a long period of contact. Alright, so what they did not say there was violence, plague, anything like that. So, Eridu, Iraq was an ancient city. All right, known to be ancient to the Sumerians. All right, Uruk was an ancient city which was located to the northeast of Eridu. Elam, all right, was an ancient city uh, around 3,500 BCE. And then you've got all these different uh, places that you can look up. So Arslan Tepe, Sumer, Taurus and Zagros Mountains, Sea of Marmara, Cuneiform, which is what they say was the first form of writing. Uh, interestingly, they say that Cuneiform was initially invented to keep record all right so it's really more of a way of keeping record of items keeping record of things you can imagine um the economy all right people would have been interested in keeping record of how much they had of certain sorts of uh you know materials and items and objects all right and being interested in not losing wealth and maybe gaining wealth all right around this time 3000 bce mind you this is when plague is spreading from ukraine all right people on horses spreading from ukraine um, you know, you know, uh, ravaging, uh, you know, terrorists, rapists, all right, are spreading from Ukraine around this time into the Middle East, all right. Some of the first victims of Caucasians in history were those people who lived in the Middle East, all right. That was their first place of conquest, the Middle East. So this is from Karen Armstrong, A History of God. Uh, I'm not going to read through all of this. However, this right here will give you a good idea of the background okay to the myths that we find in Judaism and Christianity and Islam all right when they talk about uh, the flood and they talk about Noah's Ark and, and Ararat you know they're getting these stories uh, a lot of times from Mesopotamian myths all right that were passed down or that they um, initially would have you know come into through conquest all right so they conquer the people and then they take their religion all right, or the people's religion ends up getting assimilated to fit the conquerors. All right, the story that they end up telling uh, 
places the conquerors at the center. Okay, you can imagine how these Mesopotamian myths would have gone through the same sort of uh, thing. So, Karen Armstrong, History of God, if you want to look up the book, you can. You can see her credentials and all that. But she says, in the beginning, human beings created a God who was the first cause of all things and ruler of heaven and earth. I'm not going to read all this. It's going to make me sick reading about God. Uh, but I'll let you read about it. This book that she has is great. It's awesome. Here we go. Indigenous African tribes. So belief in such a high God, sometimes called the sky God, since he is associated with the heavens, is still a feature of religious life in many indigenous African tribes. All right. So it was nothing new. The Jews didn't create anything new. The only thing, all right, the uh, only new thing they were inspired by was plague. Yersinia pestis. All right. We know Yersinia pestis spread from Ukraine. What is Ukraine now? 5,700 years ago okay into Europe into Asia and they also spread into Africa proclaiming that they had some you know some sort of uh, reason to conquer land and rape women and you know claiming that they were inspired by God so I'm not gonna read the rest of that I'm gonna let y'all read it if you want to uh, Don't take too long. I've got 15 minutes left. I gotta get through this, but I'm gonna scroll so that you can. 14,000 years ago. Look at that. Ancient world of the Middle East, where the idea of our God gradually emerged about 14,000 years ago. All right, so that would have been indigenous people, black and brown, no white people. Okay, they didn't invent God. God, the idea of God, all right, was around long before white skin. So our scientific culture educates us to focus our attention on the physical and material world. This is still uh, her words. Karen Armstrong. Alright, here you go. Rudolf Otto, German historian of religion, the idea of holy. That's a book, I believe, that you can read if you choose. You can look it up if you choose. Uh, there you go. So when people began to devise their myths and worship their gods, they were not seeking to, exp to uh, seeking a literal explanation for a natural phenomenon. The symbolic stories, cave paintings, and carvings were an attempt to express their wonder and to link this pervasive mystery with their own lives. Indeed, poets and artists and musicians are often impelled by a similar desire today. All right. Mother Goddess expressed a sense that the fertility which was transforming human life was actually sacred. Artists carved those statues depicting her as a naked pregnant woman, which archaeologists have found all over Europe, the Middle East, and India. All right. Like the sky god, she was absorbed into other pantheons. There you go. She was called Inanna in ancient Mesopotamia, Ishtar in Babylon, Anna in Canaan, Isis in Egypt, and Aphrodite, or Aphrodite in Greece. And similar stories were devised, or were, uh, yep, devised in other cultures. All right, you can read the rest of that on your own if you want to. Again, this is about God and the history of God. Specifically, the uh, Abrahamic God is what she's going to end up getting to. Alright, sacred and the mundane. Sacred and the mundane. Separation of the sacred and mundane. That's what they believe, uh, you know, religion was about. Separation of the sacred and the mundane. Sacred in the center, pure, and the mundane. Let's keep moving. A similar spirituality had characterized the ancient world of Mesopotamia. The Tigris-Euphrates Valley, what is now Iraq, had been inhabited as early as 4000 BCE by the people known as the, uh, the Sumerians, who had established one of the first great cultures all right, of the civilized world. Mm -hmm. Ur, Eric, Uruk, all right, Ur, Eric, and Kish, the Sumerians devised their cuneiform script built extraordinary temple towers called ziggurats and evolved an impressive law, literature, and mythology. Not long afterward, the region was invaded hmm, 
by the Semitic Akkadians who had adopted the language not long after they were invaded so not long after 4000 BCE they were invaded by the Semitic Akkadians okay who adopted the language and culture of Sumer later in about 2000 BCE that's 4000 years ago the Amorites had conquered the Sumerian Akkadian civilization and made Babylon their capital huh Finally, some 500 years later, the Assyrians had settled in nearby Ashur and eventually conquered Babylon itself during the 8th century BCE. So now we know plague started around 4000 BCE, okay, 5,700 years ago. All right, not long after 4000 BCE, you have the Middle East being invaded okay by Semitic Akkadians who adopted the language of Sumer similar to how you have Caucasians spreading plague that end up making it through the Middle East blazing a hole through the Middle East all right making it to India Africa and Europe and when they get kicked out of Africa they call themselves the Hebrews moving forward so the Babylonian tradition also affected the mythology and religion of Canaan, which would become the promised land of the ancient Israelites. There you have it. They came from Ukraine, all right, but when they left Egypt, they said, oh, you know, Israel, this land here in Canaan looks a lot better. It looks pretty, looks pretty uh, <laughs> profitable. All right? It looks like a good spot for trade. We used to rule Egypt, and Egypt had to trade through here, so we might as well set up shop here. Okay, let's see if we can... Put a cap on uh see if we can see if we can you know profit skim a little off the top of what egypt's got going on and that's what's going on israel has the whole world in a headlock believing in the uh, delusions of the bible makes me wonder what hitler uh knew but i move on let's move on we need education all right uh so I'll let y'all read that on your own. I'm going to move forward. In the beginning, the said the Enuma Elish, the gods emerged two by two from a formless, watery waste. I'll let y'all read that on your own as well. That's just like the uh, just like creation, very similar to creation in the Bible, Genesis. Uh huh. Let you read that on your own. All right, this is more of the same Mediterranean myths. All right, same Mesopotamian myths, not Mediterranean, same Mesopotamian myths, all right, that ended up uh, being passed down and, and compiled and put into, uh, first, I guess, the minds of Hebrews and then written down by uh, Moses. Probably put into the minds of Indo-Europeans in general, all right, and then recaptured by Moses. Or whoever wrote in the name of Moses so here you go I'm gonna try to get through as much of this as I can before an hour and let you read on your own pause it on your own and read so you have to listen to my voice all right that's some good stuff here it's all quotes not my words not my words not my ideas that you're reading here And not once have I come across a book, maybe except for Francis Crest Welsing and Chancellor Williams, uh, that that explicitly stated anything about where white people came from and, and, and actually put it into perspective. Aside of those two, maybe John Henry Clark as well. But you won't find it explicitly stated in these books scholarly or what have you um, the best I found overall is Chris John Chris Johnson all right I'll go back to it again Chris John Chris Johnson who was a uh, archaeologist 
he may be a geneticist as well. All right, this is his talk right here, Chris John, Chris Johnson. And he said, origin and spread of the earliest plague emerged in Ukraine. All right, that's the best I've found. He doesn't say white people specifically, but he does sit there in front of a room of white people and say, we are all Russians. A room full of white people. He's white and he's telling them we are all Russians. Okay, so I, you can take that to mean a few things. One of them, that white people, Indo-Europeans, all right, originated in Russia. All right, Putin is their daddy, their granddaddy, so to speak. Yeah, come on back to Papa. <laughs> All right, moving on. Let you read that on your own if you want to. Mm hmm. There you go. Like, again, this is not my words. I'm not, uh, I tried my best not to, you know. Put too many of these in there i try to let the let the author's ideas flow you know as they do in her in her book mm -hmm. early hebrews pagans mm -hmm. chopping heads off they didn't have to worry about you know putting their book of lies together until after the conquering was done. So after they got kicked out of Egypt, then they had to, you know, compile the book of lies and try to get their story straight. All right. Moving on. I know we're coming up on an hour. Okay. Akhenaten. That's important. But not more important than plague in Ukraine 5,700 uh, 5, years ago. I knew about Akhenaten before I knew about plague, and no doubt about it, plague is plague is the uh, smoking gun, as Alec Jones would say. Alec Jones would say, smoking gun. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Baal means false god in Hebrew. If I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Around twelve hundred BCE. Fourteenth century covenant between the Hittite king. Fourteenth century Hittites. What are they talking about? Fourteenth century Hittites. Hittites. Where are the Hittites from? Right here. Right here. Hittites. Mm hmm. Conquered down into Egypt too. Made their way down into Egypt, the Hittites. Mm hmm Plague. Gifts of the Jews. This book's by Thomas Cahill. I actually got this book uh, from a from a white man. From a white man who was the academic dean at a school that I worked at, first uh, straight out of college. And he was giving books away, and uh, I was one of the first people to get to the box of books, and this was one of those books. And so, yeah, I definitely grabbed it, went through it in a couple of days, um, and I felt like he had he admitted a lot of things that I was looking for some some person to admit. So I'm not going to read all this, but basically, this is the story that I would say most white people who study religion and who understand 
uh, Judaism, Christianity, and all that, as well as uh, have a concept of, you know, the history of, of, of white people. This is the picture that they have in their minds, and I don't know if they're if they tried to explain this to us or if they want us to believe that we are the real Jews but I'm pretty sure that they know they're the real Jews um, and through rape and through domination they have in a sense made us into their children um, and thereby making us Jews but this is generally or I'll let you read it on your own this is generally the idea that most white people I think have in their head all right, if you ever come across a smart, what you consider to be a smart, knowledgeable white person, odds are they are aware of this information. Okay? But this is also what you will never hear being taught in black schools. All right, they won't teach us about plague spreading from Ukraine. They won't teach, uh, you know, black kids about the real history and putting two and two together. Uh, they want us to just think about melting pot, you know, and Jesus died for our sins and let's just, you know, keep our blinders on and keep working and, you know, before we know it, we'll all be, we'll all be, uh, brown, yellow, we'll all be yellow, you know, just everybody be nice and happy and we'll all be yellow like the Palestinians, right? And we won't get bombed like the Palestinians. No, no way, they're not going to bomb our chocolate cities. ATL ain't going to get bombed like Gaza one day, no way. Like Tulsa, no way. It's not possible. Jesus died for our sins. We got Jesus. Let go and let God, right? Just keep keep chasing that dollar. Let go and let God. All right, this video gonna be too long. Let me keep going. So you can read that on your own. The invention of a couple of things there is very important. This is about writing and why they were writing. It's very important. Mm-hmm. And the ziggurat. Different things that they were interested in doing. They were interested in fertility. I'm, I think it's interesting that fertility, okay, was was uh, becoming so ritualized, all right, in in the ziggurat. I'm not sure if I've gotten there yet. There you go to black-headed people where they got all their skills from. What do you know? Black-headed people. Uh-huh. Replaced by Akkadian. We covered that already. All right, Semitic Akkadians, okay. Not too long after 4000 BCE, all right, Indo-European language family spreading, plague spreading from Ukraine around that time, a little bit before then. All right, next thing you know, in the Middle East, all right, we have conquering happening, Akkadians. All right, I'll let you read that one on your own as well. Don't want this video to be too long. I'll put these people to sleep. Scroll up just a little bit. There you go. Yep. All right, Jewish genetics. If you uh, if you're still awake, this is going to be a good one. So, Jewish genetics. Um, these are the founder mutations. All right, and associated diseases, genetic diseases. All right, associated with uh, major migrations uh, in Jewish history. Okay, look at how these line up. So around 1900 BCE, Abraham supposedly migrates from Ur and the Chaldees. So from Ur and the Chaldees, let me just show you this on the map here. Oh, right here, on the timeline first. Abraham, all right, from Ur and the Chaldees, uh, like here. Ur and the Chaldees. All right, like uh, it's not on this map. It's right here. Ur and the Chaldees. Now, mind you, his ancestors came from here and spread around conquering people. But now Abraham decides to go from Ur and the Chaldees up around here, down here. Tried to go into Egypt, couldn't stay because there's famine there too. Or couldn't stay here, so he had to go to Egypt. All right. I haven't read that book of lies in a while. I'll have to freshen up <coughs> one day. Uh. All right, and then look at this hearing loss that's called deafness we'll get to that mediterranean fever g6pd deficiency i think that's related to the uh fava plant okay cystic fibrosis as well as uh 
I'm not going to get back into that. G6PD, there's a couple of things I could go into about that. All right, around uh, 1000 BC, all right, 1100 BCE, Kingdom of David and Solomon. All right, Kingdom of Lies and Lies. Breast and ovarian cancer, hemophilia, Parkinson's disease. That's 3000 years ago. All right, genetic disease in Jews. Uh, around 700 BCE, you have the Babylonian conquest and exile. What do you know? Tay Sachs. Hmm. Then you have, all right, around 700 CE. So that's the common era. That's uh, 700 years supposedly after Jesus was uh, was born or around Jesus was born, Jesus' birthday. Migration of future Ashkenazi Jews in the Rhineland. Okay, so people, this is basically on both sides of the Roman Empire, honestly. All right, 700 BCE, 700 CE. Capped in between the Roman Empire, the Principate, the Republic, the Empire that it grew into, and then the fall uh, to the barbarians, all right, the, the European barbarians. Hmm. All right, so. Uh, Goucher disease, hemophilia, Riley Day syndrome, Bloom syndrome, Tay Sachs again. All right, so it was probably a, a, a recurrence of the prevalence of Tay Sachs, or I'm not sure. These are bottlenecks, population bottlenecks, all right, that are causing these things. So you can imagine a bottleneck that would have occurred uh, initially in Ukraine when the plague initially uh, emerged. All right, and people are dying left and right, and people are getting burnt up, and their heads are getting cut off, and people aren't trusting each other, and these refugees, all right, everything's falling apart around these refugees, all right, and they decide uh, to spread plague all around, all right, raping indigenous women, killing indigenous men. So Parkinson's disease, and then non-syndromatic deafness, all right, again, deafness. Uh, here we have 1150 CE migration of future Bukharan Jews to Samarkand and we have myotonic dystrophy all right so that has to do with the muscles similar to Parkinson's uh, and then we have around the same time as the bubonic plague that we're taught that we're taught about the black plague in Europe the migration of Ashkenazi Jews to Lithuania all right and we have hypercholesterolemia associated with that as well as dystonia which I believe is also uh, related to the muscles and, 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 and uh, nervous system so and then we have 1450 CE all right Spanish Inquisition migration across the Mediterranean into the Americas and what do you know prion diseases prion diseases so y'all have heard of mad cow disease right huh but you didn't know that there's a version of mad cow disease all right, that is a genetic disease found in Jews. What do you know? All right, and then we have, uh, I'm not going to read through this, Jewish DNA and mtDNA, but you can if you want to. I'm just going to hover over it so you can read uh, on your own. All right. I'm getting sleepy, so I know y'all are bored. All right, the presence of these European Y chromosomal lineages is the major difference between Ashkenazi and Middle Eastern and Sephardic Jews. All right. Founder events, both from the migration of people whose origin was in the Middle East and from Eastern European people who mixed with the Ashkenazi Jewish population. All right. Akin to what has been observed with founder disease mutations, as we showed uh, up at the top there. So now, uh, y'all can read through this stuff. It is... I had to read through it a couple times myself um, to understand it, but it is very, I would say, important and informative, especially when they give the dates for coalescence, all right, because we know how long humans were around, we know how long humans had been around the world, all right, but we're going to see these dates for coalescence of, uh, or here you go, like this, of these different haplotypes. So, modal haplotype, the co cohen uh, modal haplotype that's like the priestly haplotype all right genetics of the priest caste within Judaism it was called a modal haplotype because many Kohenim males diverged at one or more markers usually by one unit of that marker if the generation time is 25 to 30 years 
then the progenitor of this Y chromosome, meaning the person, the common ancestor, all right, who they descend from, lived 2,650 to 3,180 years ago. 3,180 years ago would be around the same time that the Hebrews supposedly left uh, Egypt, okay, and quote unquote resettled uh, old stolen land, all right, land that they had stolen on their first uh, wave through out of the Caucasus. So moving forward, these two haplogroups diverged from each other about 25,000 years ago. So that would have been indigenous. This is Palestine, uh, Palestinians here that trace back to this. Among men with co uh, CMH, Cohen modal haplotype, the J1 haplogroup and the J1 haplogroup, the time to a most recent common ancestor was, why would it be 8,700 years ago, around the same time the A111T mutation happened, okay? And around the same time, just so happens, all right, that you get uh, the plague spreading from Ukraine. What are the odds? Whereas men among, uh, I'm sorry, whereas among men with a J2 haplogroup, the time to a most recent common male ancestor was 17,900 years ago. All right. So to me, it makes sense that it would be 25,000 years ago and 17,000 years ago. Those are generally pretty close. I would say they're about, you know, 20,000 years ago. But then this one right here is interesting to me. Why the priestly caste, okay, would be 8,700 years ago. But we're going to move on. Nonetheless, this record refutes the idea of a single founder for Jewish Kohanim who lived in biblical times. In other words, the Bible was wrong. All right. God could have told him this right here. All right. Back then, God is all powerful. He could have told him what the truth was. All right. Back then. But he didn't. No God, no problem. I'll let y'all read through that on your on your own. Let y'all read through this on your own. All right, we got a bad habit of calling Ashkenazi Jews fake Jews. I'm just gonna tell you right now, most Europeans and Caucasian people around the world, all right, are Jews according to the lies told in that book. All right, because they came from the Caucasus Mountains, and that's where the Jews came from, the Caucasus Mountains. Noah's Ark landed in Ararat. All right. And over this time, people have been trying to get away from Jewish identity. White people don't want to be Jews. All right. A lot of white people don't even want to be white, especially once they figured out that white's not superior. All right. They don't even want to be white anymore. All right. And this has been going on for a while. You can imagine these plagues spreading. All right. And people feeling like they're being picked on by God, genetic diseases, what have you. Okay. Not knowing where they came from. All right. Being treated as outsiders. All right, not knowing that plague originated in Ukraine, all right, thinking their homeland is in, you know, the Middle East, all right. I can imagine that would be stressful, you know, and, and people are getting tired of it. That's why they said they wish Jesus died, all right, for everybody's sins, all right. Jesus could be the scapegoat. There are people that, were, that hoped that Jesus was actually the Messiah. There were some Jews that hoped that Jesus was the Messiah. All right, but most of them said, no, 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 we're not falling for that. <laughs> There's no way out. Uh, Islam as well. Islam is, is Islam. Uh, Muslims probably claim to be the realest Jews of all. They're the ones that actually keep to the uh, so-called Torah, uh, laws of the Torah. So there you go. You can read that on your own. I'm going to scroll through Europe pretty fast. This is taking way too long. Probably have to remake this at some point. But, uh, I scrolled too fast there, sorry. There you go, I'll let you read that. Penance and Beads, Ochre, again. Okay. You're also going to see some Obsidian as well. All right. This is a long time ago. This is long before white skin. All right. This is in indigenous Europe. Okay. This is indigenous black and brown Europe that you're reading about right here. Parts of France, Germany, Britain, all that is all black. All these accomplishments, sorry, all these things that were happening back here, this was black Europe. And they don't want us to know that Europe used to be black. Okay, and that plague spread from the Caucasus Mountains, all right, by uh, refugee terrorist rapists on horseback, led to the decimation of indigenous Europe. 
All right. Yep. There you go. Uh huh. Younger Dries. We've gotta we've gotta know this and have this big picture. All right. Make a timeline and memorize it. All right, just the process of making it will help you remember it. But we need to make a timeline and memorize this the same way we memorize all the movies that you ain't black if you ain't watch. And Juice and Belly and all that. Okay, well, get this in your brain. All right, before you end up being 50 years old. All right, with Juice and Belly in your brain. And Jesus Christ died for your sins in your brain. And the Bible's black in your brain. All right, and now your kids got to solve the problem. You pass the problem down to your kids. All right. We ain't going to feel... I myself am not going to be feeling bad for people, all right, for the 50 year olds in my generation. When I turn 50, you better believe everywhere I go, I'm calling y'all fools. All right, every chance I get, I'm calling y'all fools. And I'm going to explain to people how dumb y'all are for still propagating these delusions, all right, that we could have the chance to disprove, all right, growing up, all right, in our 20s and 30s. And y'all still passing them down, still holding those same delusions. When, it, when you're 50, 60 years old, you better believe I'm going to let you have it. And I bet your kids won't be too happy to hear it, but oh well. I'm going to tell them how dumb their parents and grandparents are. Or, or you have an alternative. You can just make a timeline. Make a timeline, all right? And you can teach your kids, all right? So that when you're 50, your brain is not diluted. All right, you're not believing in these delusions, and your kids will not suffer from you believing in those delusions either. You won't have to worry about anything from me. You'll be safe. Protect yourself now by making a timeline. Don't wait till then and try to play the victim. All right, put the work in now. It's not that hard. You ain't got to copy all this stuff. Just make a timeline. All right, and fill in places, then make a map. Or go print out a map. Okay, and draw on the dates there. And if ideas, if, if, if questions come to your mind, write the questions down and go seek for the, uh, go ask, you know, go ask Google for the answers. I'm sure the questions you come up with while uh, being exposed to this perspective, all right, the big picture are going to be fruitful questions, all right, they're going to lead you in a, uh, in a good direction. Don't skip past any of this. All right. I'm sorry for the video being so long. I should have uh, should have cut the talking down or the reading down. I think the commentary makes it more lively. All right, here we go. That's early navigation in the Aegean. That's in Greece. All, right, all this is Greece. I don't remember the author's name. Sorry for not uh, citing the author there. But I promise you these are all um, scholarly books. Well sourced and uh, cited. All right. You got India. This is from Berger Avari from earlier. All right. No clear cut shift from hunter gathering to farming. A transition was gradual gradually but clearly occurring in four or five regions in the world around 8000 BCE all right and I'm gonna skip a, a little bit down here because um, it's gonna get to the Indo-Europeans all right so the mature phase of Harappan civilization specifically the urban phase lasted between 2600 and 1900 BCE but the antecedent of this phase, the early Harappan, was in the making at least a thousand years before 2600 BC. So that would be 3600 BC. All right, that would be before uh, the plague had gotten to India, about the same time that the plague started spreading from Ukraine. All right, and we'll see how quickly, all right, the Indo European plague spreading. Uh, refugee terrorists made it to India. So indeed, the very first roots of this civilization go back even further to 7000 BCE. There you go. Move forward a little bit. Although the great cities had markedly declined by 1900 BCE, the cultural influence of this civilization continued for another few centuries after that date. Another few centuries. 
all right, another few hundred years. The absence of evidence indicating a unified empire of city-states in the Harappan system does not imply an absence of organization. And then I'll let y'all read the rest of that. Mahenjo Daro, Harappa. Believe it or not, I had to watch a world history teacher lie to kids about India and skip over important stuff and not even mention the Indo-Europeans uh, my first year out of college. He was called the master history teacher. He was a master teacher, decorated teacher from Colby University or Colby College, whatever it's called, and uh, was in there with no answers. Didn't even understand what he was talking about. And I had to sit there with my mouth shut and uh, help the students, help my student. Uh, the craft and manufacturing activities in the settlements depended for their prosperity on the internal and external trade networks. Uh, I'll let y'all read the rest of that. If you want to pause it, I want to get to the Indo-Europeans. Uh, that's very good right there. Yep, carts, Indus River. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, here we go. A decline set in around 1,900 BCE in the uh, dynamics of the Harappan system. And there is little doubt that after 1,700 BCE, little remained of the Harappan civilization. It did not, however, come to an abrupt end within a particular period of decades or during a particular century. All right. It was believed that the Indus cities were destroyed by the Aryans who entered India from Iran and Afghanistan through northwestern passes such as the Bolan and Khyber. Scholars now consider a combination of natural plague and socioeconomic factors to be the most likely reason for the decline of the Indus cities. Two of the natural factors could be the geological and climatic. It is presumed that the Indus region experienced severe tectonic disturbances brought about by earthquakes at the beginning of the second millennium BCE. These upheavals not only affected the normal course of the Indus and its tributaries, but also helped dry up nearby Gagar Hakra River. So that I put that in there because that is kind of the middle of the road view, all right, of you know, it wasn't just the Aryans that came in and, you know, conquered, uh, but there were a lot of multiple factors that were going on. There was a, you know, a wide range or whatever you know a group of factors uh that played part so cannot be explained by one particular cause uh combination of factors as i was trying to say if only i would have read that so um the final outcome was catastrophic for the mature harrapin phase the indus cities no longer had surplus produce famine and the ensuing loss of revenue would have affected all classes of people Okay, by about 1700 BCE, the desolated Mahanjadaro had become a ghost town. Uh, moving through here. The peoples of these cultures in course of time came into contact with other nomadic foreign groups, such as the Aryans, some of whom became, began to enter India from 1700 BCE onwards. All right, and a new Indo-Aryan Indo -Aryan civilization would come into shape. Indo-Iranian, Indo-Aryan, okay, would come into shape. India's history for the next thousand years and more. All right, and the Puranas are a source uh, of history for scholars looking into, you know, the history of India. Here you go. The dominant language family in the northern part of the Indian subcontinent is the Indo-Aryan. This family is also considered to have a sister branch in the Iranian family, both and both branches are said to belong to a much larger family of families, which is known as Indo-European. What do you know? And then we got Indo-European migration from the Caucasus Mountain that made it to India. Okay, Mount Ararat. Inspired by plague, not by God. Alright. 6,000 years ago, Indo-European. Okay, connect the dots. Make a timeline, get you a map printed out. So, this family, oh, I'm sorry, the longest established language of this entire family is Sanskrit. So, growing up, I heard people mention Sanskrit all the time, but they never cared to tell me, all right, or to teach us about the history of Africa and the great accomplishments of indigenous people around the world. All right, they just mentioned Sanskrit as being some old, old, the oldest language. 
oldest written language. And it is from the progressive evolution of Sanskrit over many millennia that the other present-day Indo-Aryan languages of India developed. All right. Uh, groups of nomadic tribal people from eastern and southern Afghanistan started migrating to the Indian subcontinent around 1700 BCE. And if you didn't know anything, or if you didn't know any better, you'd think that it started in Afghanistan. All right, nothing here is going to say that it all started in Ukraine, driven by plague. All right, that that work, those connections are left to us to make. Okay, and their movement gained momentum with the arrival around 1400 BCE of a particular group which called itself Arya, or noble, good, Arya. Aryan, Iran. All right. We sometimes call the Rig Vedic Aryans, call them the Rig Vedic Aryans because they brought with them the earliest portion of a uh, collection of hymns known as the Rig Veda, which was composed composed by their bards and seers in a very early form of Sanskrit or Old Indic. Other tribal groups of that period who did not call themselves Arya also tended to be included by historians under the generic label of Aryans. All right, and this new society that was born out of the mix of pre-Aryan and Aryan cultural elements, the Rig Vedic Aryans, increasingly came to occupy a central position. All right, similar to how they did everywhere else they went. Egypt, they got a central position. What do you know? So central that we today call ourselves Hebrews. We took their identity. They came into our land, all right, spread delusions in Africa, and here we are today thinking that we are the real Hebrews. Because of Solomon and Sheba or whatever other BS pastor told us. <clears throat> the Indo-Aryan culture that eventually emerged, more commonly known as the Vedic culture, is still with us in India, forming the essential core of Hindu religion and society. Okay, so the racist religions are Judaism, Christianity, Islam, it's possible Buddha, uh, Buddhism is, and uh, definitely the Hindu religion. All right, the Vedic, Rig Vedic religion. All right, so the first thing to understand about the Aryans is that they were not some sort of innately superior race of people. All right, the Nazis misappropriated the term Aryan for a wholly sinister purpose on the basis of pseudo-scientific and racialized systems of classification of human beings. The Aryan race of Germanic stock was presumed to be endowed with extraordinary powers of mind, spirit, and beauty. While the racist connotation of the uh, term Aryan has no basis in historical truth, it was a distorted legacy derived from the writings of 19th century European scholars of ethnology. So basically, all right, they were trying to piece this stuff back together. The British, I believe, when they invaded, when they went back and invaded uh, India, they were trying to piece it back together, you know, and really, you know, put a, put a rest to it and figure out where, uh, where white people originated. Urheimat, that's a German word for homeland. All right, they were trying to figure that out. Where was the Ur Heimat? And it turns out it was in Ur Ukraine. Ukraine. <laughs> uh, a number of scholars in Victoria, India, too, both Europeans and Indians, Victorian India, uh, were preoccupied by the idea and the of the glory of the Aryan race. All right, so even Indians to this day, there are Indians to this day. I believe the nationalists to this day, all right, are proud to descend similar to the way y'all Hebrew. Headlocked Hebrews are proud to descend from Aryans. They take pride in descending from Aryans. And is India allied with Israel today? I wonder. I wouldn't know. You'd have to tell me. It was presumed that India had only a primitive culture before the arrival of the Aryans around 2000 BCE. And that the Aryans destroyed the dark-skinned, uncivilized natives by enslaving, killing, or driving them down into South India. The Indian civilization, it was asserted, only began with the Aryans. This facile theory was rudely shattered when the impressive ruins of Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa came to light. All right, so basically, I'll let y'all read the rest of that on your own. It is very interesting and it's great. All right, it's also what they don't want to teach about. They'll talk about Mohenjo-Daro, but they won't talk about the significance. They won't talk about the Indo-Europeans. They'll skip right over that. All right. Uh, All right, you can read that is through the findings of linguistic research and, and, and subsequent genetic research that they've been able to piece this stuff together and figure out where that, that it was inspired by plague and where the plague originated. All right, thanks to genetics. 
No thanks to God or these Bible thumping uh, headlock Hebrews, lap dogs, to white supremacy. All right, so sometime during the third millennium BCE, owing to climatic and environmental changes, differentiated groups of people from the Eurasian steppe lands were migrating to a variety of zones outside their smaller original homeland. We know this partly through archaeology and partly through examination of oral traditions. The people who were migrating had domesticated the horse and developed wheeled vehicles, thereby making their migration process much easier. Their original vocabulary would have been augmented and modified by their encounters with settled groups of people they came to assimilate with or displace. Sorry for the typos. Of the many branches of the Indo-European languages of those early migrants, the oldest is called the Indo-Iranian. Indo-Aryan, Indo-Iranian. All right, we got to know this history the same way they get us to memorize the lies in the Bible, same way they get us to know the rules of uh, polite society and, and, and whatever else, all right? Uh, what you do and don't do, all right? Oh, you know, we got we to gotta know what you do and don't do to be cool or to fit in or whatever. All these headlock Hebrew followers that keep track of who's following what rules, all right, and all that gossip. Meanwhile, they're peanut brains with no answers, all right. Let's start memorizing this stuff instead of memorizing trends, trying to be followers and fitting in. It is comprised of two main subgroups, Indo-Aryan and Iranian, along with two related languages, Romani of the Gypsies and Narastani of the Hindu Kush region of Afghanistan and Pakistan. All right, a number of undifferentiated Indo-Iranian speaking groups, mainly pastoralists, with their cattle and migrated with their cattle, had migrated southwards on foot from the Eurasian steppe lands about 2000 BCE and spread over Central Asia, Iran, and Afghanistan. One branch speaking a type of Aryan language, possibly a very early form of Sanskrit, might have reached as far as the River Indus as early as 1700 BC. They would be the first of the Indo-European or Aryan pastoralists speaking some early form of Sanskrit, which would in time fuse with the indigenous languages. Fuse. All right, so they're spreading around the world, just fusing things together, and, uh, inspired by plague, not God. Fusing, fusing the world together, depleting indigenous uh, genetic diversity, fusing things together. Fusing indigenous women, killing the men. Uh, deeper understanding of the term Aryan can be gained by studying the religious customs and traditions that were prevalent among two particular groups of Indo-Iranians in Eastern Iran and Afghanistan. Between 1700 BCE and 1400 BCE, there coexisted in the area two peoples, the Avestan and the Rig Vedic. All right. Common ties of language, culture, mythology, mythology, delusions, superiority, racism, and rituals developed between them before they ultimately separated. In their religious beliefs and practices, they worshipped a number of gods together. They both shared a tradition of composing hymns in praise of their gods. In both traditions, the description of such nature gods as those of winds and sun, for example, are similar in tone and feeling. All right. And then, uh, it's, a, it's an hour 30, so I'm going to try to hurry up. This is pretty cool. Soma, you can read that if you want. You can imagine they would have uh, probably, you know, used that when they were riding around on chariots and horses, cutting heads off, killing indigenous people. All right. And then this right here, almost to the end. I'll let you pause and read that on your own if you want to. Scroll down some more. All right. Change occurred in the burial rites of the people. Inside the cemeteries, the archaeologists, the archaeologists have found both flexed inhumation, flexed inhumation, now that goes back to Ukraine, in a pit and cremation burials in an urn. Cremation, that also goes back to the plague. Okay, when plague is spreading, disease is spreading, you end up burning stuff, right, to kill the disease and keep it from spreading. This dual practice was not common among the contemporary cultures of the same region, but the early Vedic literature indicates that both inhumation and cremation burial were practiced among the early Indo-Aryans. Hmm. Another indication of change is the ceramic style, a new type of grayware 
that was handmade and decorated with incisions is much in evidence during this period. On the basis of the change noticed in burial rites and ceramics, the archaeologists call the new culture the Valley of Gandhara Grave Culture. All right, they lived in Punjab for many centuries. Uh, and from the Rig Veda, we learn that they were confronted by an indigenous people called by them Dasis or Dasias or Panis. Panis. All right. And, and many pejorative names such as blacks, demons, or cattle thieves. What do you know? The Aryans helped by Indra, the god, the war god, vanquished these people. What do you know? It is important to stress that these defeated people were not the Harappans. All right. They had mixed with the Harappans, right? They had conquered the Harappans, but then after, all right, they ended up going to war against the people they called the blacks. This is in India, mind you, okay? And around India, uh, Pakistan, India, Afghanistan area, all right, Punjab region. Aryans came from that region first, all right, they made it into India. And you can imagine, they blaze a hole through the indigenous. They don't necessarily exterminate all of them, all right? They set up their, uh, they reach civilization, all right? Find a way to integrate with that civilization, take over that civilization, and then they can start their wars on the indigenous people and, and worry about genociding the rest of the indigenous people. The same way they did in America, right? They didn't, they didn't wipe out the natives. They didn't finish wiping out the natives until uh, after Lincoln was assassinated, if I remember correctly. But I could be wrong. I'm not inspired by God, so I could be fallible. Uh, and then here you go. All right. Genetic diseases in humans. This is in humans. All right. By Professor Joshua Akey. You can look that up. They found an enormous excess of rare variants in the European Americans. 73% of the, these mutations had only appeared in the human genome in the past 10,000 to 5,000 years. Most were mutations that weaken proteins. Most of these harmful mutations were also in the people of European descent. Not my words. People want to call me arrogant for uh, for putting work in and reading books and quoting uh, you know scholars. Hey, I guess I'm arrogant. Can't call me lazy though. I put the work in. They didn't put the work in. Pastor didn't put the work in. Many are known disease-causing genes, such as LAMC1 gene, LRP1, and CPE. All right, and then you can read through the rest of that. Duplications. All right, duplications. Very interesting stuff. Stuff that they never want us to think about. I'm going to keep us memorizing rap songs and doing TikTok dances while they have conferences about this stuff and decide what they're going to do about us. All right, and then I'll let you read through that if you choose. A lot of people I've heard, you know, assume that white skin is a result of drinking milk. I don't think that's the case. Or, or, or producing, uh, I'm sorry, consuming milk uh, products, dairy products. Don't think that's the case. Africa and the Middle East between 5,000 and 10,000 BCE. That's before white skin uh, came into existence. 5,000 is around the time that the mutation came into existence, but that wasn't in Africa or the Middle East. Uh, closer to the Middle East. Yep. Closer to the Middle East. Just north of the Middle East in the Caucasus Mountains in the Russian Steppe. Russian step. Alright, and uh, coming up on the end of this video, so I'm just going to scroll down so y'all can read through this stuff if you like this last one here from race culture and evolution by George W Stockton jr. It's kind of a older book but <clears throat> I found it useful again none of this on here is my words except for the little bullet points the one to three bullet points that I put in to kind of give an outline for what's going to be covered All right, but these are not my words half breeds <laughs> Talking about Native Americans here, stealing land and all that stuff. And race, the idea of race. Alright, you can imagine that they developed, you know, ideas of race over the past 5,000 years of genociding indigenous people. Different flavors of indigenous genocide, you know, depending on what part of the world they went to. Yep, just new slabs of land and peop with people on them. Waiting to be, uh genocided up lambade into a meal 
served up to the conquerors. Mm hmm. Inbreed over a long period of time. Not my words. Not my words. Stuff they've been thinking about for a long time, but if we start thinking about it, it might start a revolution. Especially if we got the big picture of history in our mind. Memorize it like we do the movies, like Juice, or Belly, Boys in the Hood. We memorize uh, big history. to think racism didn't exist until the transatlantic slave trade black history didn't exist so they say until black people came to America until Africans were brought to America as slaves and that was when black history began how dumb is that yep Clearly, if non-Aryans can become Aryanized by contact, and at the same time Aryan genius is a matter of blood, then what is in the blood is at least in some instances the Lamarckian product of cultural influences. We were their products, we were their, we were their experiments, at least here in America, for the past 500, 600 years, all right, and they got a hold of Africans before they got a hold of Native Americans, so you can only imagine they were experimenting for longer than that. All right, Caucasians got into Africa before, quote unquote, Western Europeans, all right, discovered West Africa and started exploring, all right. Western Europe used to be black, all right. You got to understand that Caucasians, all right, spread from the Caucasus and wiped out indigenous Europe, all right. <clears throat> before they got to wipe out indigenous Europe, all right, they made it into Africa. All right, they made it into Africa before they exterminated all of Europe because they spread from the Caucasus, all right, which is right above where Jesus was born. Your Lord and Savior was born, that you just know was a black man, your bronze, your bronze savior, bronze bastard. Hmm. All right, no God, no problem, right, with the bronze bastard. All right. And uh, that concludes that. So thank you for, if you managed to stay awake, thank you for...